Okay, I'm just back from Lake Woodlands doing the test run. This boat's wet, it's dirty, but it ran great. And uh, let me share how I got this thing rigged with the 403. So it's 2022 Jackson U-Pick. It's a sealed hull, which means there's no hull access anywhere on this boat. There's no hatches to get inside. You gotta remember that it's supposed to be stored and transported with an open drain plug. But there's no in-hull access. So how do you get foot control steering in a boat that has no in-hull access? Well, I use the Sealex and then stainless cable. And that's where I entered with the tubing. So I'll show you the tools that I use and how I did this in a second. And I'll get some pictures in the video, some still pictures in the video as well of how this, uh, how this all went together. So that tubing runs from there to the back. So the first challenge was mounting these. So I had the Yak Attack 90 degree mounts and they put it up and out and they were all the way out here. And my thoughts on that are, I wanna use this boat for fly fishing as well. So the more open deck that I have, the better it'll be. So this is gonna be my uh, scouting and tournament boat for saltwater. My Kusa FD will be my freshwater tournament boat. Okay, so I got the tubing in and the cabling is pretty much self-explanatory. Three screws siliconed in and I had to cut off four of the front to get the clearance and I'll show you why in a second. When the motor is up and you have to paddle, this will come all the way there and rest on the body. And now you have a rigid foot peg for paddling when you're in too skinny a water to use the motor. So that solved two issues for me. It gave me a solid rest as well as foot control steering for the motor. So let's go back. The tubing goes in hull. And what I did was come out of the hull here. Now, if you watch my Jackson Kusa FD uh, steering foot control steering video, these are the exact same West Marine side entry cable ports. They're lower profile. They're for two cables or tubes. Basically, it's all RTV'd in. And then I have the eighth inch P-clip. Now, here's the tricks. You got to drill the two one inch holes just like a fish finder. The P-clips, you need the space as you do your melted flare on the tubing, but you need to space this out because if you pinch this, put this in too tight with the rivet, it squeezes off the tubing and then you don't, you're not able to get the stainless to slide through smoothly. So the trick is to put two really thin washers in there before you rivet it in. And once again, these are the West Marine side entry cable ports. All right, let's talk about how we actually made this happen here for a minute. This is 12-2 Romex electrical wire. It's black and white. I actually used, pulled this out, had about 10 feet of it. Um, pulled this out and snaked the starboard with the white and the port with the black. Obviously you can use whatever side you want. And it doesn't really matter. But the trick with that is you can't get it in the tubing. You need to butt the wiring to the tubing and make sure you have enough wraps with electrical tape on both so that when you pull, it doesn't let go. Now the trick is not how to get the wire from there to the back or the tubing from there to the back. The trick is how do you get the tubing out of the boat? So, two tools. First tool I used was a flex light and st stuck it in this hole so that I could work on the starboard hole. And then I reached in, and this is just an automotive snaking, wire snaking tool with a claw on the end. And that claw on the end allowed me to grab that Romex wire and pull it up out of the hole here. By pulling it taut, I was able to make sure that the tubing ran along the gunnel and stayed here instead of going in all over the place and getting crazy and requiring even more resistance along the way. Once you get both of them out, leave them long, get these secure, get everything sealed, make your connections here, 
And then when you come back to the front, you've got these tails hanging out. Pull on them so that you pull that tubing taut and put a lightly, put a pair of forceps or locking um, vice grips on the tubing to hold the tubing there so that when you cut it and make the flare, when you let go of the vice grips or forceps, it slides back and goes tight and you can get some RTV or some goop in there and make sure that that hole is sealed as well. So that's how we get the wiring and the tubing to the back. All right, I'm out on Lake Woodlands doing a test run and might as well do a little bass fishing. So we've got the foot control steering on the Torquedo, 403 AC. Let's straighten it out here. Here's the control. There we go. Let's see what we can do with it. I think she's gonna max out around five and a half. Yeah, she's pushing five five right now. If I had a tailwind, I could probably get six seven, five six, five seven, but I'm full throttle. I'm gonna run up to the cove and see what else I can catch up there. She's working good. Foot control steering, you can see. Responsive, reactive. I'm trying not to crash while I'm filming behind me. She's good to go. Not on the lake. Okay, let's go over some on, on water controls here. So you can see that I've got the stainless cable looped around that and I got the sliding track and then it comes back here dives in here underneath the rail that allows that pocket see better let's get my legs, legs out of there that allows the pocket to still be used for st uh, storage boxes okay now we've got the torpedo rigged and like I said this just came back from the this came back from the lake here in Lake Woodlands so let me show you how I rig the Torquedo. Eyelets, two eyelets to the cinch, three eyelets to the cinch. Adam utilizing the strap and then through the hole so that you're vertical on the pull because you don't want to torque this motor shaft to either side by leaving it all the way out here. You want to get as vertical as possible. So that motor, that little pull, pushes right down. These cables here are taut and they put control sliding in the tracks there. So if I can do this and pull to the right, you'll see I have almost 90 degrees. The reason why I don't have 90 degrees on this is where I came out with the rears on the cable ports. But I will tell you after spending the day on the lake, 85 degrees is plenty enough to spin around in a circle.